I don't want to do this anymore. I don't know what to say to you. I'm going to quit. Do you think we should? I think this is my last episode of the show. Same. Because the tension has been high. It's, but not against each other, just like against no, the world. No, it's against the world. <laughs> it does feel like we're like we're God's toughest angels right now. Like we really it's are. really, really, really not easy to do yeah. what we have done. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm not kidding. Like after last night, I was like, "We did this." When you told me the audio didn't record, I think I acted like my whole family was just shot dead. I was so afraid of you, and then you got right to work on a pasta and peas with a pancetta, like within eight seconds. We were I, at the supermarket. You were yeah. food shopping. No, that's that's. I think that is how I take like my anger out. Is like I need to cook. You immediately were, were boiling pasta. Yeah, because if not, like I would have been throwing the table. No, and. What's insane to me is that that wasn't even the first mistake that was made this week. No. So let's just backtrack. Let's do so it. So it's when on Wednesdays we release an episode, we mm-hmm. record an episode. This Wednesday we start our episode. Something wasn't right. The energy was off. Like I don't we know. We weren't being funny. No, the thing is, like, we were being funny, but like we are we're perfectionists at heart and we're sick. So we're like, that's not going to make them laugh. Right. But, like, it but we still was manic. we were for an hour and 40 minutes until you said to me, are we being funny? And I said, no. No. And then that was it. And we did realize then, too. No, not yet. Oh, jeez. We then said, let's just film reaction videos after. Oh, my God. Because we were like, we're not being funny, but we'll, like, we'll do this again on Friday. But we <laughs> might as well. The cameras are out. Let's watch some old videos. It was a crying. And that is where we watched for 45 minutes, Mm -hmm. if not honestly, maybe longer. I think it was like honestly an hour and 20 minutes. Yeah. And from there, we went to go wrap up. Your phone was just not recording. It wasn't recording. And we were shocked. Like, these were videos we have not seen in in 20 20 years. years. It was like actual nostalgia. Freaking out, screaming, crying, everything. Wasn't recording. Wasn't recording. That was honestly, to me, that was like the beginning of the end you might as well just smash my head in yes then we had friday Mm -hmm. on friday which was yesterday it feels like it's been 10 years yeah we do it again Mm -hmm. we say this time it's gonna be perfect and And it honestly was no no it wasn't we made two more mistakes yesterday (laughs) not it wasn't like there was just one more issue there were two more issues that were made and blacking out all the events because we then did the reaction videos again and it didn't record. And it didn't record for a second time. So we did, we, and that time we were acting. We were and I deleted anything. all my apps. You deleted? Because I deleted my Bank of America. I deleted, honestly, Hinge. I deleted TikTok, which Joe let me know too. I have about 16 drafts in TikTok that I haven't pulled the trigger Gone. on. Gone. Um, Smewl. That's made up. Smule, yeah. Smule is a karaoke app that I've never used, but like always just like felt like I needed it. You hate to sing when I'm in the apartment. I do. What is that, Joe? I don't know. Like, I think that you're a good singer. I'm singing all the time. You are singing all the time, and then like I'm just like, but like I want to be belting. No, you know, usually I'll hear you belt in the bathroom. I can't do anything in that room. I feel like you hear everything. I hear everything. I listen to my porn on volume zero. That to me is a sickness. Like, yeah, the very like. Am I going to be shocked that you're listening to porn? No, I mean, I don't know. Like, you know it's 11 p.m. The noises you make eating a pasta sound, like, honestly pornographic. You know what I mean? Anyway. Anyways. We tried that once again. The video didn't record on the no. reaction. Nope. From oh. there, we said, one more time. Mm-hmm. One more time, we're going to get it right. And we did. We did. And what you're going to see later on in this episode, what you're going to hear later on in this episode, is that portion of the episode that was recorded. It looks great. It sounds great. It is great. Yeah. Then we do this again. Mm-hmm. So we finished about an hour and a half, hour 45 of reacting. Yes. We sat down. We're doing another full episode of the podcast. It was really good. It was really good. It was a good. really good episode. I felt really on. Yes. And we had so much caffeine. We had so much energy. We had so much to say. We rap. I go to press stop recording. It begins to record because I had never pressed it to begin with. And then Joe says, you know what? It's honestly going to be fine. Like, I can just, like, play around with the volume and it's going to, like, most people, like, don't have sometimes, like, people, things go wrong with Things go wrong. It's this morning. It's Saturday morning. I'm coaching. It's the big high energy one hour class. Joe has my phone, is downloading the video, brings my phone to the studio. Within two seconds of him dropping the phone off, I get 10 text messages. I don't even know what to say to you. Like, the video looks 
horrific. Like, it looks like we shot on an iPhone 7. Like, we gotta do it again. <laughs> I was ready to... I was ready to take a long nap, if Off you know the side what I mean. of the building, yeah. If you know what I for mean. For sure. Yeah. Like, actually. Yeah. It yeah. really we got to that point. And here we are. And here we are. And honestly, if anything, and talking about this week's episode, we are here to per form and we're always here to perform go on. the show must go on the show must go on good, good children i don't know why i always think that i can do something crazy no i think that that's what life is all about hey you guys and welcome back to good children the podcast where me and andrew discuss our joint childhood in the late 2000s early 2010s and all of the nostalgia trauma and theater that that entails mm, the theater Here's that accent again. The theater. I don't do accents. But can you? Are I you willing to do it? I'm willing to do it. That I was... think that's not that bad. No. 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 Okay. No. Okay, so you're going Australian. Yes. Oh, that does sound very... That's almost New Zealand. It is. I mean, like, I think that, like, New Zealand accent, I never can decipher between them. The one thing Except I learned Lord the speaks, most... Because I'm like, how, is that a real thing? New Zealand. When she speaks. Lord. Yeah. Brooklyn, it's so good to see it's, you. I'm like, what the... That's f- my Lord. I'm literally like, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm like, you're beautiful, but what's coming out of your mouth? I learned my accent from Harry Potter. Yeah. I actually grew up... I mean, I've always had a weird voice, but I used to speak in a British accent Mm -hmm. naturally as a child. Like it was more, I had more British in me than Long Island. A hundred percent. And that's from Harry Potter. And I will, I I mean, I remember specifically you were always speaking in a British accent. Constantly. I don't know what it is about me. Like I just couldn't take that leap of faith to also do the British accent back. It's a confidence thing. It was a confidence thing. And I think for that, it was like Joe's better it's kind of what we're it's always going through. Publicity. Exactly. Because you're better than me. Yeah. Exactly. And you always were better than me at an accent. So I was like, I'm not going to do the accent, but you were always doing the Thank accent. You. And it's really good. Like, Thank I you. do like your French boy. My little French boy? Yeah, it's very good. Would you like to go to Deepak? How would you describe yourself today? How are you feeling? Like a homewrecker? And also a slut. Yes. Is that where you were at? I was, that's exactly what I wanted to hear from you. I the feel two like a homewrecker and a slut. slut. And that's not anyone's fault but Sabrina Carpenter's. Exactly. And she should speak up because the way that that song has permanently influenced my entire life, mm-hmm. I want a homewreck. Exactly. It's actually, I think every fifth and sixth word out of my mouth is normally homewrecker and slut. I'm a homewrecker, I'm, I'm a slut. slut. And that's the impact that she's having right now. She is our generation. Because I like to boy. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I had an egg salad out. sandwich before this. Joe had an egg salad sandwich. I, I will say that like before you even told me you had an egg salad sandwich you when knew. I walked through the door, you like knew. it smelled like actually like rotten eggs. So I was like, okay, it's egg salad. And you know me with any type of egg salad, tuna salad. I know what you did. And I'll never let you forget it. What? What you did to me. I mean, like, it's not normal to bring tuna salad to school. It was egg salad. Oh. Yeah, you're right. And you're right, he you're walked, right, right. he was just trying to enjoy his sandwich at lunch. And you looked over at him and said, is that egg salad? That's disgusting. Yeah. He burst into tears, into yes. hysterics. The lunch he had to help him. I'm sorry. I should not have said it like that. But, like, <laughs> you're going to open up your little Ziploc baggie and it's going to permeate the entire room. No. No, thank you. Bring in roast beef. I, mean, I like actually, actually have a lot of things villain. to work through. I have you to are the through. villain. I am. I actually am. Let's just get it out there in the open about the theater oh before we get God. started about what? who we are. About who we are. <laughs> and I know that most people probably weren't thinking it but joe let's say it together we are i think everyone's thinking it we are repressed theater repressed gaze. theater gaze yeah i think everyone knows that oh my god i think it's obvious you think i think that you can pretty much read it on our faces no i know it's obvious yeah and i wonder how much worse i would be if i wasn't repressed do you know what i mean you, yeah no <laughs> i actually can't imagine how much worse it could get like if we but... had a stage to stand on when we were 16 years old forget about it yeah. Forget, you couldn't tell me anything. I would have a smirk. I mean, I have a smirk on my face all the time when I'm walking, but can you imagine, like, I had a platform to perform? I do believe I would have been, like, a Sharpe in that sense. Yeah. Because if I was not getting the main role, how would you react? But we did realize that you're Gabriella. At my core, because I'm a freaky... Freaky genius girl. Freaky genius girl. And if you want to hear more of us talking about Gabriella and her freaky genius girl tendencies in all of the High School Musical cast... 
don't forget to check out Sleep Over Cinema. They're releasing their episode tomorrow on Thursday. Watch it, stream it, listen to it. I do reveal, I would say, some of my bleakest and darkest secrets yeah. about High School Musical on that episode. Anyway, theater. Anytime I go to the theater, anytime I see a musical, obviously it's like, that shouldn't be me holding your hand. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I wanted to be on the stage. And that is middle school for you. I was so fucking jealous mm -hmm. of every single closeted gay boy who did a musical in middle school and high school. Yeah. It's all I wanted to do. Yeah. And what were we doing? Honestly, wearing wigs and we doing were... the same exact thing just behind it, just for a camera and not for people. And that leads us perfectly into the next portion of the podcast. Oh my God, yes. I'm going to take a seat over by you on the couch and oh we'll, we'll watch some home videos. And we won't look at each other in the face. Never. So the magic of these videos originally was like we were going to watch them for the first time again with yeah. you guys. We've seen them and yeah. we've seen them a lot and yeah. we've commentated a lot. Yeah. So at this point, we're going to walk you through it. We're going <laughs> to hold your hand and say this is what you're going to watch because I think that will just ultimately perform better for us than pretending that this is new. I agree. We're going to start at the top. This is one of the Please. first ever documented videos of us. We are five years old. It is two months fresh after 9-11. I just have to say it. And it has I, nothing to do with what we're about to watch. It has nothing to do with 9-11. If you see this video, this is how we're coping. It's kind of scary. What I'm imagining here is that my mother filming it is like still processing national trauma in a way. Yes. And is like, this is what she's watching. Yeah. And I think, Joe, before you play the video, I think you need to do your um, advisory. Oh, my God. So, yeah, this is, again, this is a joke I've made three times now, but maybe this time it'll hit. If you are walking around, if you are listening to us and you look real, first of all, you look really good today. You look amazing. I'm and with everyone you. knows it. And, yeah, everyone is looking at We're you on the street. Friends. People can't stop looking at you. Yes. Um, if you're, like, chopping vegetables, like, if you're, like, doing some sort of cooking presentation, like, just in case Ina Garten is listening. Curl like, your fingers in for this one. Yes, curl yeah. the fingers in and put the knife down. Put the knife down. Um, any other physical activity you could possibly be doing right now, stop. Because what you're about to see might shock you. Yeah. And I genuinely think... Especially for the Musketeers listening, for the true Musketeers, the true Andrew my fans, musketeers. you're gonna lose your fucking mind. My Musketeers. Oh my god, Becky, look at her butt. It is so big. It looks like one of those marvelous children. I like big butts and big you laugh. And what is it to laugh? I mean, that video is like an NFT. <laughs> like. I can't believe that that was the song that was on my mind at five years old, like post-trauma for everybody in the country. And I was really spitting. You're I was spitting rhymes. Yeah. And you're wearing a gorgeous little turtleneck. It's stunning. I'm wearing shin guards. <laughs> Joe is shin guarding my <laughs> I'm shin. My, my, my shins are completely guarded in yeah, this context. Literally, Why? Yes. We came back from soccer practice. It has to You're dressed to... like Lorelai Gilmore, though. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I was always a little bit chic. You were always a little bit chic, but from soccer practice? I guess so. It must have been cold. It's fall. Oh, it's fall. It's fall. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's November. November it's November 2001. Yeah, that makes sense. It's cold out. I was wearing a maroon turtleneck, which is normal. Lorelai. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Remember when that tuxedo place body shamed you twice, almost? Joe, I actually can't believe you're bringing this up right now because... Yeah, it was for my communion. I was going to get a tuxedo. Um, I think it was called like VIP tuxedo. Yeah, it was on Broadway. They didn't treat you like a VIP. No, they did it. They dropped me. Like, trip, trip. Oh, I just dropped. It's because you they, have how much caffeine right now? Um, that's coursing through my body. Yeah, I would say about three hundred milligrams. That's so unsafe. If you die on camera, it sucks. If I died on camera, like honestly, I think it would be a. I'm going to stop. <laughs> but yeah, no, they body chained me. I went in there and they said, I'm so sorry. We don't carry sizes that are that large. My mom told me to leave the store while she stayed in there. And I can only imagine what ensued, what ensued. Because again, I'm walking into that, that tuxedo place saying that I'm the model here. Right. I'm 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 stunning. You are the VIP tux. I was a VIP like little Guido kid. You're right. Ready for my communion. That I think my communion had to have about two hundred and fifty to three hundred people. Your communion party for me was yeah, it was like a mafia wedding. Yeah, it, it was. really was so decadent. <laughs> it was so incredible, and that's where 
I had you gas were, pockets. You always had gas pockets. No, oh. the day that you told my dad you had gas pockets, we were on the way to like someone's birthday party. That's classic. And you said like, I don't feel good. I think I have gas pockets. <laughs> um, and your little raspy voice. Yeah. But no, at your sweet at your communion is when you said to me, I just re- I just did a number three in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that one sticks to me. I can see it. I can feel that moment. Loved putting a number on my fucking Bow- bathroom. Ex- my bowel. But the number three gets me. Number three it means throw, throw up. up. One piss, two poop, three throw up. Yeah. So that's what I, I would always say. I just I just did number three the, in the bathroom. Did a number three in the bathroom. Anyways. That's that's that one. <laughs> <laughs> that's that video. So I hope that you guys can take that and cherish it. And now we're going to age ourselves up a little bit um, to about sixth grade. <gasps> oh, my God. Isn't it kind of wild? It's crazy. The shirt looks so good on you. <laughs> Thank you. How do you still have it? I'm a hoarder. At the end of the day, I keep everything unless, like, told to throw it out. And this one was just sitting in my closet at home. It still actually has, like, some zhuzh, some zhuzh. Yeah, that's, like, um, residual, like, Dunkaroo frosting. Like, vin- like truly uh, rare. Absolutely. Absolutely. I was definitely either sucking my fingers or sliding oh, like, them across yes, my wiping chest. off. Because I've never seen you use a napkin. And I can't speak that I've ever used a napkin. Yeah. This couch? This couch is actually just our napkin. (laughs) What did they say to you yesterday? Yesterday, as I was laying cheek to couch, as you were leaving the apartment, you said, I spread a hole. Yeah, I wiped my ass on that couch. I was like, bye. Have a good night. (laughs) And then I fell asleep on it for a little bit. Anyways. Anyway, yeah, it's kind of a serve that I'm in this shirt still. Um, I kind of have the same body. I honestly. probably gave you a stern talking to you before we started. Yeah, you probably like, if you don't come to deliver here, like, I don't want to be your friend. And I'm going to have the lyrics behind you and you're going to have to figure it out. Because you like don't know the words. before we press play on this. You're saying you don't know the words already? You don't know the words? Andrew, done how do you not know the words? <laughs> We've been practicing this for two weeks. I'm like, yeah. I know, I'm busy. Okay, let's just watch. <laughs> My lip reading. The way is... that you could, yeah, your 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 lip syncing for the back row. Oh, oh. no, it's oh. funny. <laughs> I'm wearing a football shirt. <laughs> I just can't believe that you're wearing a football shirt. And I'm wearing a shirt that says "I'm My mom's, mom's favorite. favorite." Look at your stance. <laughs> no, no. So the pre- the lyrics are printed out behind us. Yes. I guarantee you they're probably handwritten. You probably highlighted and said, like, yes. Andrew. Andrew's part. <laughs> Wait. No. I can want it. What do you think happened there for, in my head? You were like, I need to show Andrew that I can do it. And do you this. don't care. No, I, I can look down. <laughs> At this point, I'm, like, truly only concerned about what I'm going to have to do going forward. <laughs> like, oh, my God. I'm switching the sheets out. <laughs> you're fully... I'm, I'm stage crew. It's like you're doing taxes. Going through your head the entire time, it's like, he's ruining this. Yes. Yeah. And this is where I said I'm going to get creative. <gasps> it is you were so on that vibrator stunning. like you... <laughs> like... No, it does not go lost on me that it is an Nimbus 2000 vibrator. And it's <gasps> up my ass. This is where I took the shoes off. This is so incredible. Your Munchkin Land era. Yep. Because I said, I'm going to be lower than Joe here. Let me raise my shorts. Yeah. Oh, and <gasps> there they go. Oh, I was kind of like, that's what my legs look like. Anyway, and then we move on to 2010. This, I do 11. believe, was cutting edge. So the year is 2008 or nine. Yeah. We see, come on, get the tree. The tree. tree. My son is gay. Remember my son is gay? My My son son is gay. gay. And in that, he says, my son is gay. He moves to New York, you're gay. He moved into the city and now he's gay. And I remember being like, oh, I can't move to New York or I'll be gay. But nevertheless, (laughs) she persisted. I think that he is a major inspiration for what happened next, which was Farmville Moms. Yes. Which was started as you imitating basically Patty. Yeah. Just like doing, because if there was one thing my mom was obsessed with at that time, it was Farmville. Farmville. You know, she's on like level 2000 something of Candy Crush. She's, I mean, come She's on. obsessively playing Candy Crush. For the, still? Still. So that's something that's happening for her still to this day. But 
we made this video. You can see it on YouTube. And obviously, like everything we do, it can't stop there. It must progress. And as it builds, it becomes Facebook Moms, and then it becomes the, the real, real Facebook, Facebook Moms of Long Island. Island. I'll never forget the rebrand because I think it came with the new wigs that you got. These were the new wigs that I this, got? These were, they were been beat up at this point. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. So you're right. You gave me the wigs for my 13th birthday. Which is normal. And then you brought the wig to, to Universal. Universal Studios. Yeah. It was an amazing wig. It was. It was. It was saucy. It was, it was really saucy wig. It was voluminous. It really, really was. It really was. And then we used them to their grave. We did. We and this is their grave. We're having a party. I want to talk about Snuggies for a second. How did the Snuggie ripple the fabric of society so intensely with just two sleeves? You're so right because, like, at the end of the day, what they could have just done is just tie it around your body. You know what I mean? I guess it is just, like, the sweatshirt of it it's all. It's a robe. It's a backwards robe. It was just, like, giving people the chance to be lazy. It's not even a sweatshirt. A Snuggie, the original Snuggie is a blanket that has two sleeves. Mm. The blanket with sleeves. Snuggie. The blanket with sleeves. Do you remember the obsession with, like, as seen on TV that happened at that point, too? Yep. Like, Billy Mays, when Billy Mays died, I genuinely, genuinely think I, I didn't go to school. I had to take the day off. I was grieving. <laughs> I grieved Billy Mays' death. And then there was, like, suspicious circumstances Sham-wow. under which he died. Sham wow. Sham wow. Honestly. Why was I 12 years old begging my mom to get me a sham wow? Everything actually everything and i don't want to say like i know that i say i want to be a lot of things in my life you're a billy maze i think i am a billy maze at my core yes because like again like i'm an ideas guy think about this why are you at the movie theater and you don't you're wearing your sweatshirt you're wearing your sweatpants what if you had a sweatshirt that had the capability of a snuggie right like your little you put your pouch it folds down that pouch and now it's a full blanket you're at the movie theaters you're comfortable you're comfortable i mean come on i don't want to bring a blanket to the movie theater and that also we're talking college stadiums we're talking universities we're talking branded you know what i mean a sweatshirt it flips down it's a blanket your tongue is so white. You're going to say <laughs> after my actual sales pitch that I was on Shark Tank, the first word out of your mouth is going to be, your tongue is white? I really am impressed by the sales pitch, though. I love your jar. It's a mason. <laughs> Cleaning this house is These so These are good. I need a break. I'm sorry. Can we just really quickly point out the fact that even here, you have your emotional safety pillow? I mean, like, that makes sense, right? Like, people do that. I don't think that they, don't, do I people think it's a do that? body response more than it's anything else. Oh, it is a body response. Deborah! Should I just pretend I'm not home? You know what? I'm just gonna go eat lunch. It is the way that you embody hi. a woman. You know what? This woman. Oh, hi, I was just cleaning. Girl, you don't need to clean this house. I'm telling you, it's spotless. You know how to make a woman blush. The craziest part about these for me is that we're like actually at the age where people our age are drinking, smoking, and having sex. Yes. You, oh. Like we're like 14. Yeah. Yeah, like we're getting drunker and drunker. Yeah. But we're also like, but we're, I don't know what drunk people act like. But we said we probably, we can't show that. My mom probably said you can't show that. Yeah. <laughs> you are in half on time. Rock well. No, you just crack me up. <laughs> Yes. Oh, fucking yeah. If you were not a Katie cat, it's time to grow up. It's time to grow up. Grow up. Grow up. I want to see your peacock cock cock. There's something so sweet about the fact that we were like legitimately way too old to be doing this. No, it, it makes me sick. This is a piece of history. Oh. And like, thank you. God. Thank God. Thank God we have these videos. Support for Good Children is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in below-the-waist grooming. Their products are precision-engineered tools for all of your grooming needs. Manscaped's performance package is the ultimate hygiene bundle. Join over 4 million individuals worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code GOODCHILDREN at manscaped.com. GOODCHILDREN at manscaped.com. How are your balls doing? Joe, my balls are smooth, smooth, smooth. 
I feel, I don't know if it's the heat wave that we're going through or if it's my smooth, smooth balls that are making them so much freer and like looser, if you will. Mine are honestly like toned as hell because of the ball toner. Yeah. Mm-hmm. My balls are swinging. You know Dude, what I mean? <laughs> oh my God. They're clapping. They're clapping. Wait, I kind of love that. Yeah. No, it's great. But honestly, like if you don't have balls, that's fine. Mm-hmm. Right? Because it's like with Manscaped, they also have foot deodorant. Yeah. Like, wait. No matter what your gender is, yeah. you we all have pubes. We all have pubes. We all need body wash and we all need foot deodorant. Yeah. Period. So don't forget to check out you guys. And um, you all have nose hairs. I'll say it. 20% off. off. And free worldwide oh, shipping. shipping. We see you, Australia listeners. We see you, Uruguay. 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code GOODCHILDREN. Good children. The one video I do wish we just watched was you as Ida Garden in 2014. Inspired by a trip to Paris, I'm making Jeffrey a Parisian couscous. He's gonna love it. I was the OG Ina Garden, and now, like, it's kind of time's up for me. Time's up for me. Life's about taking a creative chance when you have the idea. I know. I always wait, wait, wait. You wait. And yes, yes, I'm jealous. I am. And it's okay. I'm learning how to get through my emotions. You're jealous of the, the TikToker who does it. Yeah. He's am- amazing. Yeah. He's doing incredible work. Right. But every time I watch it, like, I won't like the video. And now I'm going to oh start liking God. the videos. I'm going to start liking the videos yeah. because I'm like, I see it and I'm like, what the fuck? And you find reasons to critique. He, he is good. He literally is so good. And that is, I think, the biggest sign of hater syndrome. Yep. It is like any people who hate Ben Platt. Please bring it up because why what are people hating Ben Platt? Ben Platt, Platt? Done wrong? Literally nothing. Done He's wrong? only been doing things right. Like the songs, amazing. His voice is incredible. His acting is, I'm always like, that was right. good. So everyone wants to kill him because he did Dear Evan Hansen in the movie. We should kill him. And he was like 80. Yeah, it's I insane. get it. It's whatever. And like, yeah, nepotism, baby. Is he like, sure. Even in his 30s? No, he's like 28. But the thing is, it's like, why are we dragging him through the mud? People are like, he doesn't deserve those roles. Right. I honestly would like to see you saying, not you. Oh my God, were you ready Oh my to God, go? like I actually like, I got really nervous. <laughs> no, I was speaking to the BPH, the Ben Platt haters out the there. The Ben Platt haters and then those that like will hate on me for being Ben Platt. Yeah. But I, I'm happy to be Ben Platt's understudy whenever he needs me. That's I'm ready to idea, show up. That's a good Andrew. That's a good pitch. That's kind of good. Yeah. And if you haven't streamed and I'll say it once, I'll say it twice. I'll every it time we recorded this, you Every single this. time because I believe in it. If you haven't listened to his song Rain, stream Rain by Ben Platt because it's going to make you feel something, an out-of-body experience, I it's would say. It's what Drew Barrymore's talking about in that video. It is. She She's was streaming Rain. She, she was. was streaming Rain. She was. She really, really was. The Beanie Feldstein hate, I could, I will stay up at night every night thinking about it. Like, yeah. can you imagine? No. Can you imagine? You're so, okay. You're so excited. You just got the role. You're like, I'm going to be the funny girl. The I can sing. Girl. I can do the funny girl. I'm like, <laughs> she gets on stage first night. People are like, hate. she can't sing. She can't sing. I went into it expecting her to actually not be good because of how much I heard negative reviews. Mm-hmm. She was great. She was excellent. She's so funny. She's a great singer. And she brought so much life to that yeah. role. So much life. And you're going to hate on her? For what? Because you hate yourself? Oh my god. <gasps> oh my god. Oh my that god. Was just like, that actually just came that out. That was of... the meanest thing you've ever said. I know. That came out of nowhere. Wait. Whoa, I couldn't even stop that one. I do think similar to a theater, a repressed theater gay, there's also the archetype of the Food, Food Network, Network gay. gay. If you like Ina Garten as a gay man, you won't settle for anything less than perfection. Yeah. You you have a perfectionist trait. Yeah, because and you, it's killing you. You need the pizzazz. You can't go for normal ingredients. You can't go for normal things in life. You need the elevated ingredients because if she's saying get the saffron, you're gonna find the saffron. And you've you always don't... reminded me of Jeffrey. You are really, I, th- I do believe, their biological child. If you're a pioneer woman, Stan, honestly, get yourself into therapy right now. Get yourself into therapy and just prepare yourself that you want eight children. Joe, do you like you like the theater? Why are you doing this to me? You like the theater? I don't like the theater. You like going? I don't like musical theater. Do you not like musical theater? Or, like, do you hate yourself for liking musical theater? I don't understand why you suddenly... Did you get a degree from, like, yeah. Better Help right now? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I went to one therapy <laughs> session and I'm willing to take the front seat. <laughs> Listen, I've learned one thing about myself more and more and more every day, Mm -hmm. and it's that I have definitely someone who has chosen to reject the things that I think might reject me. 
Do you know what I mean? Oh my god, yeah, I do know what yeah, you mean. Yeah, so the people, the places, and the things that I have, have either rejected me historically or I project would reject me. Yeah. One of those things is musical theater. Okay. So yeah, I do believe I hate musical theater because I secretly wanted it. Yeah. But at the same time, those shows are too long. The theaters are too crowded. The it's seats are too, too small. small. The drinks are too expensive. First of all, Joe's getting a Jack and Coke. Which is, like, kind of hot. It's internalized homophobia. Okay. Yeah, that's definitely what it is. Because it's, like, I'm getting, like, w- the the waitress special. You know what I mean? Like, yes. I'm getting the sugar butter flower. Right. And I will get it. And, like, then the bartender, every single time you're at a musical, is, like, double. And I say, yes. Yeah. I like to say that I've never done musical theater before in my life. But that's a lie. Right. I actually did community theater at the church growing up. Um that sounds so Stars Hollow, you know? And it, it really wasn't. It couldn't have been any further from that. Yeah. I'm coming in at four or five. How old are you? I'm probably 10. I am about to get on stage. This What's going m- through your head? I can't fuck this up. <laughs> <laughs> I actually can't fuck this up. Like, I'm carrying the show with my one line. Right. And it's like, shucks! Before I'm getting on stage, a middle aged mother, right, right, turns to me and says, have you ever thought about getting a bra? Uh, 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 uh. The way everyone's jaws drop. Everyone's jaws drop. Like, can you believe that? She told a 10-year-old child that he needed to go to a Victoria's Secret and get a double D-sized oh, okay. bra. Okay, are you exaggerating the rest of the story? She said she told you She to didn't. Be- no, but that's how I interpreted <laughs> it. That's how I interpreted she it. She said get a double D bra at Victoria's no, Secret. She literally was like, you, I, I think that you would benefit from a bra. And you're not going to tell me I'm going to have crippling body dysmorphia. For the rest going, of your life. Yeah. And now, like, even in the shirt, I'm yes. like, I need a bra. Right. I need a bra. And that's always going back in my head. And I went to college with her daughter. Fuck her. You're going to the movies. What are you getting for a snack? Oh, my God. Well, there's a few options. I mean, the pretzels and cheese. The pretzels and cheese. That is ultimately, that's God tier. That's the best pot. That's the top of the pyramid this week. I would let somebody actually, like, take that cheese and Drown. slap it all over my body like it was sunscreen. Oh slap it. I kind of am horny. Yeah, no, same. That's, That's the best cheese. Like, people want to fucking say that fake cheese is not good. Like, it's give me an easy cheese can, put it in my mouth, and like... Directly, like, human centipede it. Like, kind of human... There. Yeah, like, shove it down my throat, and like, it's gonna be good. You're right. I think the top tier of it all is the pop. Well, the pop, it's the butter. It's the... It's just the seeping, soaking, hot Butter. If I could just put that butter into my hands and, and drink cleanse it. your face, that's kind of how I usually wash my face. <laughs> it's kind of basically it. I mean, it's butter on tap. But the thing about getting the butter is the social anxiety of thinking you might be observed getting too much butter. <laughs> You're so right. Like, there is such a fear for me, especially as a kid, like filling up my little popcorn with butter. I'm like, yeah. no, if anyone sees this fat boy filling up the butter, butter. like, I'm going to be made fun of. If there was somebody that. standing behind you, done. <laughs> done. But I also, like, you're trying to get it into every single crevice. Like, it's almost a sign. You're, you're shaking, shaking it. You're shaking. You're doing it all, like... Because, God forbid, one piece of that popcorn is not drenched in butter. Eeky Palmer. I I don't know what to say about her. Like she is the voice of our generation. Yeah, she is. I mean, we talked about her before. We'll talk. We'll be talking about her. I assume next week as well. Yeah, there is no greater living artist ever than Lauren Kiana Palmer. I'm naming my first daughter Lauren Palmer Muscarella. I can't wait. And then Ella. And then Ella Muscarella. I just get nervous for Ella because <laughs> I she's going to be bullied. She's going to be bullied. And God forbid, she's a little chunky. Ella girl. the Elephant Muscarella. Ella the Elephant Muscarella. Yeah. Like, that makes me sick for We've her. We've been having this exact conversation since we were six. Yeah. About Ella. Yeah, I've been really talking about Ella You've so been manifesting much. Ella. And I was like, it could have been Ella. It could have been Isabella. But it's just Ella. Ella. Ella Kiki Muscarella. <laughs> I kind of love that. <laughs> That's good. We But Kiki Palmer is, to me, is she not doing enough for you? Like, what's happening? I It's really confusing because it's like, she's not just getting started. She's been doing this forever, but she's just getting she's started. Just, she's always been just getting started. Like, she has a clear vision for her career and, like, I see it. I see what she's doing. I actually want to hit the streets and... Go around and say Billy Eichner vibes. Billy Eichner vibes. Be like, are you what are your thoughts Kiki on Kiki Palmer? Palmer? And they're like, oh, Aquila and the Bee. We're like, I shut see- the fuck up. I'm like, no. Joyful noise. Joyful noise. You fucking idiot. 
Better the Bure. Stupid, but she's doing it all. She's doing it all. So I think funny. that this is the year she wins an Oscar. Yeah, and I think she's gonna win an Oscar for no. I think that this is it, and I'm putting it out there. I want to put all of my energy Egon behind it. Coming within the next five years. Speaking of the movies, get the snack out. So let's just again address the fact that the popcorn we're about to eat is at the bottom of the bag now. <laughs> when we started making this video four or five days ago, yep. it was full. I've probably consumed. Uh, more snow caps than I thought even existed. Today we're having hip corn. Honestly, I'm gonna be completely honest. It is some of the crunchiest, tastiest, most popcorniest popcorn. They're mini. It's mini. It tastes like movie theater popcorn. And there's no butter. Before we open this, I do have something to say about the movies. Okay. You're sitting in the theater. It's the most silent part of the movie. You hear this. <laughs> now what? Now what? I am so miserable. I'm pissed. I'm pissed. What? How have we as a society not progressed past it? Do snow caps only exist for the movie theaters? Because if you're getting snow caps and you're not at the movie theater, are you gonna... If you're someone who eats snow caps outside of a movie theater... You just want a chocolate chip cookie. And you're a frontline worker. Yeah. Because that is impressive. I my uncle like, makes them. My father sells them. You can't beat, beat that, that combination. combination. Yes, we were eating popcorn with snow caps in them, and it's amazing. But I do want to talk about how we've progressed as a society to be having hot food no. during the movie. I Listen... I consider myself a fairly progressive person. I'm willing to draw the line at a hot meal in a movie theater. Have I partook? For Many sure. Times. We love Simon. <laughs> we <laughs> Already do. it's funny to me we, that we saw Love, Simon in theaters together. On Long Island, we're at Love, Simon. Um, it's like a normal movie theater that has decided to start doing like a culinary experience. Mm -hmm. What did we get? Well, first of all, we sit down, we're in front of a young a, a young ally and her father. Mm -hmm. um, anytime there is reference to gay men being in love. Which that was the point of the, the movie. point of the plot of the movie. He is going, Ugh. every Ugh. single time. They kiss. Ugh. But every I time. actually also was doing the thing. <laughs> Why did we get this? We could get anything you want. We got theater. Balsamic Parmesan Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts? But they're really just, it's a different level of amazing. And I just don't think it's fair that a movie theater can sell those. You know, it's the smell, it's the taste. The smell is overwhelming. The taste is, I, it's otherworldly. You know what I mean? And you know, it's just the little things in life. <laughs> what the fuck? You, because the thing about a movie theater, people like to bring in all of their fucking food. People pretend that once the lights go off, you can't smell shit. You can smell but it. You can smell, you can smell everything. everything. Almost more intensely. We took that fucking cap off. It was like we opened a bomb. It was it people. Was so, people were turning and looking. On alert. They we, were on alert. I have nowhere. Imagine balsamic parmesan Brussels sprouts no. permeating through the Love, Simon movie theater. No. Okay, so it's time for the, the girls, girls room. room. And today we have Anna. Anna is reading us our advice. Anna is reading us our advice. How do you find a queer best friend like y'all have? Basically, I need to find more friends as a 24 year old. You're asking the wrong people. You really are because we are solely friends with each other <laughs> and girls. <laughs> no, but we are finding. We, we have, are. We are slowly but surely, I believe, finding queer. It's finding, it's finding queer, like queer people that connect with you i think that it took me a really long time to be like i'm so fucking weird right like i'm genuinely weird and you're like, like you sound like kendall jenner whenever you say this i'm like i'm so weird but again like it is hard especially especially being gay it is hard to find another group of gay friends besides like going on grinder or going on whatever and like going out to the club because we don't like to go out no and i think that's the problem is that i think for a lot of my life i've expected to find my friends even find like partners at like a gay club Mm -hmm. or like a gay party and the thing is i don't like going to those things not in a homophobic way yeah. but in a, i actually just like don't enjoy those spaces mm -hmm. like fist like i don't like i'm uncomfortable yeah. it's crowded i love to go to sleep early it's yeah. just not for me so 
I think it's about it is about finding people who like the same things as you. Yeah, and that could be a that could be a club, that could be anything that you are also interested in. Truly, there are things out there for you to join. Like, and honestly, for me, dating apps has been the only way I make friends. Friends, Joe, you have a big burly beard, and there is a popcorn kernel. So just in fall it. out. It's kind of hot. Yeah. Again, we're not the best friend experts, but you're our friend. Yeah, and when we do a meetup, come. I regain trust in men after so many grinder flops, pick collectors, ghosters, and narcissists. Oh, this this one actually hits me at my core. How do you? You honestly, like, it is really hard. I think that, like, I'm kind of similarly in this boat right now because it's so easy for you to be like, I'm just going to delete the apps. Like, I'm just going to delete it. Like, it'll happen, it'll happen, it'll happen, but, like, you're not putting in the legwork at that point and you kind of just, like, gave up right it's like quitting right but you really do need to just be like there is going to be somebody out there like for you it might not be those apps right like that's why i'm trying to get like away from the apps because what are you judging people off of yeah it is. there's nothing worse than sending your pics and somebody blocking you yeah like how do you go on with that like you first of all you're probably dealing with all your own self-esteem issues they block you you go on a date and then you get blocked or ghosted or whatever and you're like what is it about me? So I would also challenge somebody. you to observe who it is that you're seeking out. Yeah. Because again, with the apps, you might be going for somebody that you objectively think is hot. They have no substance and they actually like, you can't, you can't trust them. You, you may experience like fucked up responses from people, but those people are not relevant to like your story. Yeah. And that's why that's happening. Yeah. Like you, like if someone's ghosting you, it's because you don't need that person in your life. Yeah. It's not like you're not losing anything from that. Um, so keep the faith. Keep, keep the faith. faith. Whoa. Whoa. You got this. You're hot. You're stunning. Slay. Slay. Oh my god. Oh my god. We oh did my... it. Do you I feel like of... the best you've ever felt in your entire life? In my entire life, I kind of feel like... As if, though, I would have felt like if I just got off a stage. Yeah, I feel so good. Yeah. And usually I end this by saying I feel horrible. I feel amazing right now. Mm -hmm. Like, we really did it this time. We kind of slayed it. I can't wait for none of this to be recorded. Well, you know where to find us. If you're looking for us on social media, we're on TikTok at Good Children Pod. I'm on TikTok at Be Quiet Joe. I'm on TikTok at Andrew underscore Musky. We are on Instagram at Good Children Pod, which is growing and growing and growing. Insane. It's going to beat us out. Out. Yeah. The no, engagement rate is nuts. It's the story nuts, these though. are nuts. It's nuts. So we're over 2,100 followers. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. Um, I'm on Instagram at J O E H E G Y E S. I'm at Andrew M U S C A R E L L A. Don't forget to rate and review us, you guys. And honestly, I have something to say. We're at like 500 reviews on Apple Podcasts, which is in it's insane. insane. It's insane. My goal was a thousand. Right. And I'm just being honest. And for those listeners out there, if you have not rated us, if you have not said a little something, take those phones out, take a little second, and just give us a review. Send us a screenshot. DM yeah. us on Good Children Pod proof of your review. You will either get you can you can have one of two things from yeah. us. You can ask for an original response video or a video of Andrew performing to Sabrina Carpenter's because they're like a boy. boy. I'm a homewrecker. I'm a slut. Like, I have a few different choreo moves that I can I can throw out there. Subscribe, press the bell button, comment, like, follow, download, share. Tell your Live friends. Live your life and perform. Yeah, don't be afraid to get on that stage. We'll see you soon. See you soon. If we were a movie, you'd be the right guy, and I'd be the best friend that you'd fall in love with in the end. Oh my Kinda god. Good. All right. All right.